let's talk a little bit now about how this process of computational cognitive modeling works for the acquisition of some knowledge about WH dependencies. And just to remind you, uh, WH dependencies are something we talked about a little while earlier. Uh, the particular knowledge we're going to focus in on are syntactic islands, or constraints over WH dependencies, but dependencies we don't really prefer versus the ones that we do, for example. And as a reminder, if we have a kitty who was bought as a present for someone and Lily thinks this kitty is pretty, we strongly disprefer this one. Who does Lily think the kitty for is pretty? Eh, not so great. Uh, versus what does Lily think is pretty and who does she think it's for? Like, this is much better, right? So we have these preferences. We seem to be constrained in some way against liking this one. So what's going on here? And the idea is that there is in fact a dependency, a relationship between the WH word who and where it's understood, which is the gap, right? So who does Lily think the kitty for? The kitty for who is pretty. We don't like that one. Uh, in particular, this dependency is strongly dispreferred in English. Why? Well, one explanation is that this dependency crosses uh, something that's lovingly known as a syntactic island. This is basically latent structure that the mind imposes on the sequence of words, and a WH dependency can't cross this latent structure. And the metaphor, why is it called an island, is that you have a, you know, a, a dependency that can't get out of an island. There is no crossing an island. You're surrounded by water on all sides. No one can swim. There is no crossing, right? That's your metaphor. When you have these latent structures, they are islands that cannot be crossed. Okay, so this one has been known as a subject island. Let's look at a couple other ones. Uh, we have Jack, Captain Jack Sparrow. He's somewhat tricksy, and he claimed he bought something. And we might want to ask about that. What did Jack make the claim that he bought? And yeah, don't like it so much. It's been known as a complex NP island. Now going back to our tricksy Jack who claimed he bought something, and now Elizabeth here wondered if he actually did, and if so, what it was. We might want to ask about that. What did Elizabeth wonder whether Jack bought? Also not so great, that's been known as a weather island. Going back to Trixie Jack, who claimed he bought something, Elizabeth worried it was something dangerous, because knowing Jack, like, it might be. Uh, what did Elizabeth worry if Jack bought? Again, <laughs> not so great, not so preferred. Uh, this has been known as an adjunct island. And the important thing is that it's not really about the length of the dependency, right? Because these are all kind of longish, right? But you can get longer dependencies that are perfectly fine. So what did Elizabeth think? We can make it longer. What did Elizabeth think Jack said? Now this is actually looking pretty long. It seems fine. We can make it longer. What did Elizabeth think Jack said Lily saw? And you might start to forget who's doing what, but it doesn't feel bad in the way who does Lily think the kitty for is pretty feels bad, right? That's the difference. So English adults, again, judge these island crossing dependencies to be far less acceptable, far less preferred than many others, including others that are pretty darn similar, except that they don't cross this latent structure of syntactic island. And it turns out that English learning children actually strongly just prefer at least one of these island crossing dependencies, the complex NP1, what did Jack make the claim that he bought style. They just prefer this dependency compared to others. And we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. And recall also that the frequency of a, of a lexical item can also affect adult acceptability judgments of, in this case, potential syntactic islands, that, you know, each dependencies that we, we disprefer. So as a reminder, when we have a more frequent lexical item like say, what did Elizabeth say that Jack saw? And we replace that with a less frequent lexical item in the structure, wine. What did Elizabeth whine that Jack saw? This one feels a little more islandy. We just prefer it a bit more, right? So the frequency of the lexical item also seems to matter in, in certain positions. So these judgments and dispreferences are a measurable, observable behavior that can signal the successful acquisition of syntactic island knowledge. If you have these preferences, have these judgments, then you've internalized whatever it is that allows you to demonstrate human-like behavior. So. The particular signals that we're going to talk about uh, show up in, in these ways. These are the patterns, broadly speaking, uh, that we're looking for uh, in order to, to capture these judgments and dispreferences. And we'll walk through those uh, in a little bit more detail in a moment.